This Week in Gaming History. All right, it's gaming history. Welcome back, everybody, to the Grimpen Gaming Broke Ass Stolen Stuff stream. Like I says, the good bad thing is I'm I made. To watch some of my stuff on Prime Netflix because free time <laughs> before and after Wednesday. <laughs> nice. See, I get all that watching other stuff out of the way. And uh, yeah, then you can. We'll be back in full force on, on Monday for sure. And you can just soak us up. McKinley finally got boom blocks <laughs> after 10 years of searching. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome, McKinley. Um, all, uh, I got robbed. Yeah. The title is No Lie. Our stuff got stolen. But the show will go on. Is, it's <laughs> boom blocks is really cheap in Europe. That's awesome. Uh, my house, McKinley. Yeah, my house got broken into. Like I said, you mean the Wii boom blocks? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he means. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> like his pants got robbed. I got my pants got pickpocketed. Yeah, pretty bad. I got spanked. Sorry, I'm just trying to set this up better here. Can we watch John Wick 3? It is pretty brutal. <laughs> it says the, bad, the worst part is he wanted to do this heist and now someone stole his plan. Oh. Alright. I'm just, sorry, I'm just getting stuff set up. I'm all over the place here. <laughs> Just watching this shell bounce back and forth. Okay, I think I'm good. Got the chat down here. I got my mic next to my face now. Uh, but I want to restart this level because I'm doing terrible. McKinley says, is Grimpin still in the States? Yes, he is. He was here when the robbery happened, though. Some of his stuff got stolen, too, because... We lost the VR, like the main, like we, you know, we have, like I lost my, a lot of my stuff, but Grimpen has a PS4 and a Switch, so we'll still be able to play PS4 and Switch stuff, and they didn't steal any games, for whatever reason, like not a single one. So yeah, like the show, the show will go on. If we didn't, if I didn't do this week and we didn't say anything, you guys probably wouldn't even notice. <laughs> it would just be we could just we won't be able to play 360 games or VR. That's like the only difference that will happen in the show. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, they don't have M McKinley asks if about security footage. Yeah, I've I've looked. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I've I've looked into that. They don't have security cams on each floor. Uh, it's still possible. They still might find something. But so far, no luck there. Yeah, it's been a few days, so I've, we've exhausted a lot of possibilities. I had the serial numbers for stuff, so if anything turns up in a pawn shop, or, yeah, they'll catch those, at least. Oh, Punch Monkey says, what the fuck? That sucks. Yeah, it really does. Whoops. Like says, can we blame the people who didn't do it? There's a guy on my work I hate. I'm totally cool with that. I'm pretty sure it was him. He was flying from Germany to Canada and did it. Yep. That... That, I mean, that explains it. Pretty sure I even saw him. Gifted a sub to Punch by Kitty. Hey, thanks, Lacko. That's awesome. Oh man, I'm playing terribly. <laughs> For the new webcam. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks, Lacko. Yeah, that's all. That's like the main piece we're missing, really. Like he, la like whoever uh, robbed my place, broke into my house, um, didn't take the Elgato. Which is like worth more than the Xbox 360. <laughs> so obviously they didn't know what that was. Uh, and they left the mics, obviously. Oh man. All right. I'm gonna focus on some Mario. In there. You Goomba bastards. Starts out harder than I remember. Yeah! Whoa. Too far. Yeah, Punch McGee says, so they didn't take the Elgato? Yeah. McKinley like, says, if only he took the broken motherboard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the problem. I, yeah, I don't have any insurance. Nah. Yeah, no games. Didn't take a single game. And there's like a huge stack of like PS4 and Switch games and yeah. Completely undisturbed. So yeah. I'm like the show will go on. If he had taken this computer, that would have been. <laughs> there would be no show. So, 
kind of crazy. In a way. Well, it's definitely crazy. McKinley's going to be in the studio all next week. So if you need to use a VR headset, you can leave yours with Griffin. Uh, maybe. We don't. It's kind of funny. Like we just finished Blood and Truth. <laughs> like we. Like, we didn't have anything major we wanted to play. We were gonna try like Doom and stuff, but. Like most of the stuff we were gonna do, like we had, most of the stuff we had planned, can still happen. It's kind of like weird. Our plans don't actually change at all. Still gonna play Otogi. Still gonna play Space Station Silicon Valley. They didn't take the N64, if you can believe that. This one was actually a hard, uh, uh, a hard game to find the date for. Like this this game is, has like three or four different dates that all the major websites say. Because since there was no stream yesterday or Monday, I assumed you guys were taking a break while Grimpen was in the USA. That was actually my plan. I was gonna, uh, <laughs> I was gonna do. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and play like more control and stuff and Smash Bros. But then things changed. Um, Mario. Um, yeah, but like Wikipedia says February 12th, so that's what I went with. I think February 12th seems to be like the, the general, generally agreed on date that it came out in the States. Uh, yeah. It's such a classic. Yeah, Punch My Kitty says this bring game brings back memories. Oh, absolutely. This was like... Yeah, like, I, I loved the first two Mario Bros, but this was, like, the first game for me that was, like, a whole adventure. I never played Zelda when I was that age or anything like that. This was just, like, such a huge... Holy that was close. Like, such a huge expansion on... on what the first game did. Punch my kitty says, should I feel old? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, maybe a little. I feel a little bit old. But that's not a bad thing. Especially when... Uh oh, what's going on? I mean, kids today, they don't get to have awesome memories like this. Not nearly as cool. Yeah, 
yeah, it's like so nostalgic. Like with all the sound effects and stuff are so oh slippery. So good. through that whole level. But my kitty says, reminds me of being in an arcade. Totally. Definitely has all those, like, sounds. <laughs> Coin sound effects. Absolutely. Triple by any two pounds. Mario's gambling addiction. Like I said, he had switched in his evening planned, and then there was free time. <laughs> yeah. So close. Oh, I thought I could jump on those hills. That almost killed me. That go watch season three of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel instead of Grimpin TV. Perfect. Now you're full up on um, comedies from, or like <laughs> comedians from the 40s. I don't know what that show's about actually. Punch my kitty and like I say it's awesome. So check it out. <gasps> Contents will help me on my way. Like I said, I watched the first episode just for fun back then, and after that, the fire and flame for this show burned, and then you went through season one to three on a binge. Wow. See, that's the best. Just, like, pump it into your veins. Like Barney with the, uh, the beer truck. Just pump it into my veins. Now waiting for season... That's one of the main reasons I just can't, I don't watch much television. I hate waiting for new seasons of shows. So I just, I wait for shows to like run their course and people either go like, yeah, that show was awesome. Or they say, 
The show started great, but then it got terrible. And then I decide what to watch. So yeah. I don't know. Too much TV. I watch some TV. I'm watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. <gasps> Whoa! Is. Oh. <laughs> the good thing is there's enough on Prime and Netflix to make the waiting sweeter. Start Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix and it's so interesting. That Yeah, I've been wanting to watch that too. Much by Gary Love, Scrub Your Enthusiasm. Oh, the new season's really good. It's like four episodes in, I think. Lass is Larry in German. <laughs> I like that. The guy who directed some of the... Uh, yeah, no, he uh, co-created Seinfeld. He was the co-creator of Seinfeld with, with Seinfeld. And it's... Yeah, and he's just... Yeah, he, he's... He's basically George Costanza. But... gets into even more like painfully awkward situations. Zach says, I'm a big fan of Seinfeld. George the Frogger guy saved the high score. Yeah, and you know, like, uh, um, when George would go to, like, his boss, at, I think when he, I, I'm, not, I'm actually not, I haven't watched that much Seinfeld, but George would go to his boss at, like, a baseball uh, stadium or something, and they'd always showed his boss from behind. Larry David was the voice of that guy.
And like season seven of Curb Your Enthusiasm is all about a Seinfeld reunion show. It's, oh shit. I forgot about those guys. Oh. Um. He built a, a bedroom under his desk. Oh yeah. Right. I, I do remember that. <coughs> Great music. This game has such good music. George also appeared in the third season of Mrs. Maisel. Oh, nice. There we go. See, we're, we're this is the synergy, the show synergy happening here. <laughs> like I said, you didn't get much as many roles after Seinfeld. Yeah, well, yeah, there was a he had a couple like sitcom attempts, but they just flopped. <laughs> Probably like Curb, uh, or Lasso. You probably like some Lasses, Larry. Like George is in the first season, I think, or second season, <coughs> or whatever. With Jason Alexander, that's his name. about Super Mario Bros. 3. The development began shortly after the release of Super Mario Bros. 2. It was developed by Nintendo Entertainment and Analysis and Development. Only about ten people in it. Crazy. Oh, I have to go up here. Oh god. I do hate those things. It took more than two years to complete. Miyamoto is the director. Oh, how do they even get into this menu? Mario flips and gets a star. <laughs> no star will save me from screwing those up.
Bam. You. Music box. Yes. Wow. Miyamoto considered intriguing and original ideas to be the key in creating a successful game. Originally, he, he intended the game to be played from an isometric point of view, but the developers found it made too difficult to position jumps, so it was moved back to the 2D side view used in previous games. Huh. Some isometric elements remain, such as the checkered floor present in the title screen. Right. Crazy. Designed to appeal to players of varying skill levels. Shit, I just read something in the wiki here. Uh, the development team introduced new power-ups and concepts that would give Mario the appearance of different creatures as means of providing him with new abilities. An early idea changed Mario into a centaur. Man. What a different world we could be living in. I guess the centaur was adapted into the raccoon <laughs> suit. Centaur's too weird. <laughs> like, oh man, what would that have looked like? Like, would this, would the horse? Oh, I can't jump up there, can I? Shoot. Like, would the horse part still be wearing the plumber's pants? <laughs> So unless like <laughs> unless Mario was shirtless, uh, how have they not brought back Centaur Mario in a different game? They added new enemies along with variants of previous enemies. <laughs> Miyamoto stated that the chain shop enemy, a tethered ball and chain, was based on a bad childhood experience he had with a dog. Oh, okay, that's what I pressed. As with children, the Koopalings were designed to be unique in appearance and personality. Miyamoto based the characters on seven of his programmers as a tribute to their work and efforts. Weird. Nintendo of America named the Kooplings after well-known musicians. I guess they pretty much are, or... Are they all? Musicians? Like, I don't think Wendy is. But Ludwig is, yeah, from Beethoven, obviously. Uh, Roy is Roy Orbison, I guess. And you got Lemmy, the Motorhead. Oh! And Iggy. Iggy Pop. Alex KC is in the chat. He says, oh man, Mario Maker 3. Or Mario 3. This game was epic for its time. Yeah, that's what I was saying too. Like, this was. Like, I didn't play Zelda as a kid. Oh shit, I have to go back to this level. That's brutal. Ooh! Um, and this, yeah, just felt like a whole, like, adventure compared to Mario 1. Just even the ability to, like, make progress, not have to play the whole game again. 
having that world map. Oh no, oh no, no, my leaf, oh no, this level's gone bad to worse. Some secret there, I swear. Bom. them on the pause screen somehow. Oh well. I've got four Marios. Should be okay. Man, those booze move fast. I should keep going or not. I should have kept going. Oh! My house case says swamps are so blue. I know it's weird. They had, there's like this game had really distinct designs for like all the classic enemies. Like even the booze have that little uh, like 
It's like the, the, the... They have like a white outline outside of their black outline. It's almost like they have a little uh, cell shaded effect. Yeah, and these guys are super blue. I always liked it. it was, yeah, I always felt like it was some of the best Mario design. Like, look, there those blues. They're like, almost like paper cutouts or something. What? I can't believe that. something here? Uh-oh. Ooh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeez. I thought there'd do something there. Question mark. And points. Like its predecessors, the music in Mario Bros. 3 was composed by Koji Kondo. He really outdid himself with this game. It's so good. According uh, to Kondo, who had composed the music in Mario Bros. is based on what he believed fit the levels rather than focusing on composing a specific genre of music. He said this game was the most difficult for him to compose. He experimented with several different genres of music, unsure how to follow up on the music from the first game after hearing several, from several people that it sounded a lot like Latin or fusion music. The development team decided that music on the title screen was unnecessary. <laughs> Alice Casey says, yeah, those bags are weird. Yeah, I don't even remember what they're for. But again, I can't remember how this works now. Uh, oh, yeah, right. I unlocked that key. Now, if I needed to get, yeah, if I die and have to do everything again, I can warp over there. I see.
Ah, uh, I wasn't sure. I thought it had an effect on it. Whoops. I just want to fly everywhere. jump on him. He was underneath me. Man, this is mean. I can't get any of these power-ups. Oh, the mushroom. Are you a kidding me? Do -do -do. During 1988, a global shortage of ROM chips, along with Nintendo's preparation for Super Mario Bros. 2, prevented Nintendo from performing various North American game releases, and it, it delayed uh, Super Mario Bros. 3, as well as Zelda 2, apparently. The delay, however, presented Nintendo with an opportunity for, to promote the game in a feature film. Pollock envisioned a video game version of Tommy for younger audiences. <laughs> Nintendo licensed its production. Nintendo licensed its products for inclusion in what would become the film The Wizard. Why they're regarded to be one of the best games of all time. It's definitely up there for me. See if I can run straight underneath everything. Hey, hey, hey. Just trying to get through these levels as fast as I can. And it's not working out for me. Ooh. 
this song is so iconic. Instantly nostalgic. by this quicksand. Oh, angry sun time. Oh no, get away from me. Oh no. Don't remember what to do for these. Ah, what do you do? Yeah, you have to jump over them? Son, <gasps> ah. Yep. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> oh man! Brutal. I have to do that other level again. It's cruel. Uh, let's grab, grab whatever's in here. Better help me out, Toad. Better help me on my way. That's not too bad. At least I can get all these items in this level now. <clears throat> There's a lot of secrets in this level. Oh, 
no! Oh. Damn tornadoes. Oh, oh, how? How was that even happening? It feels like that like ending area is way longer than the normal ones. <laughs> Just to make you think you're close and so you run past that star and get screwed over. Inside the game's data are two unused Mario sprites that look almost identical to the final release, except his overalls are pink. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> looks like <laughs> he just looks like he like did the wash badly. Oh, there's the chain chomps. First appearance of chain chomps. So I'm gonna write that down. Ah. Oh! Treasures. Got him. I got away. Hmm. Dang. Revenge of the Chain Chomps. such a wide head in it, like, when he's small in this game. Like, yeah, when he, especially when he faces forward. He just looks like a Charlie Brown character. Aw, oh, dang. Oh. Not 
so dang. We got chain chops. Nice. I got a one up. All right. Yeah, those aren't things I can use. What do I need to do there? There's a pyramid. tail. that to break this block. No. If you beat an uh, airship level wearing uh, the frog suit or the tanuki suit, the king will mistakenly believe that Mario has been transformed into a frog <laughs> or a raccoon. Mario's wearing the hammer suit, he'll ask to borrow Mar Mario's clothes. That's interesting. Hmm. In, 
the Japanese release getting hit in any other form other than small Mario will revert Mario back to his, his small form. So, like, in the West release they made it uh, so that if you're like Fire Mario and you get hit, you go back to Super Mario and not back to Little Mario. That was carried on after, like, of the later Mario's after Super Mario 3 Bros. 3. So the Western version, as a result, is slightly easier. Well, this was the first appearance of Boos. They were based off of Takashi Tezuka's wife, who would normally shy away from people, but had an explosive temper. <laughs> nice. Uh, the Koopa Troopers and Hammer Bros were gonna host two mini games. But. Those mini games were replaced by Toad. The Toad mini games. And then Kuribo's shoe, which is the name of the power up where you jump into the shoe, is the Japanese name for the power up, but it was left unchanged for some reason. Kuribo is the Japanese name for Goomba. Id Software sent a PC demo of Super Mario Bros. 3 to Nintendo, hoping to gain authorization to make an official port. Nintendo was impressed, but declined, deciding to stick to their own uh, platforms. Waterland theme was later used as a theme for the Fairy Fountain in the Legend of Zelda series. I think it's just an elaborate play. I remember that theory. Shimei Miyamoto confirmed that the game was all a play. Because of the curtains at the beginning and everything. Wow, if you let a chain shop tug on its chain 49 times, <laughs> which you shouldn't let them do. But it will actually break free. That's crazy. Well, that's lots of interesting information on Mario Bros. 3. Now I'm going to try to beat this jerk. Changes the music. <laughs> That's what she said, Alex Casey says. <laughs> you, yeah. She said, if you let a chain shot tug and it's changed 49 times, it will actually break free. <laughs> <laughs> 
And yeah, Alex Christie says it's all a stage. This is Shakespearean, this game. That's exactly what she said, word for word. Yeah, she was talking about interesting Super Mario Bros. 3 facts. Aha! I had the pee wing. You're doomed. Doom. Destroy you from above. P-Wing. All I need is the, the, the best item in the game. Oh, thank heavens. I'm back to my old self again. Thank you so much. Here is a letter from the princess. Greetings. You can stop on your enemies using Goomba's shoe. Oh, no. They called it Goomba's shoe. Or she did. Princess Toadstool did. I'm a close the jewel that helps protect you. Man. That's awesome. The music's just always like this. Skip levels with that. I forgot about that. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. We're doomed, we're doomed. Oh no. <laughs> well, um, I'm gonna stop playing Super Mario Bros. 3. Because I've got one more game I'm gonna play for gaming history, and then I'm gonna play some Otogi. So stay tuned, everybody.
Come back. Central Island 2! More specifically, Hudson's Adventure Island 2. Just in case you get it confused with any other second Adventure Islands. This isn't me. This guy's good. It's a side scrolling platform game developed by Now Production and published by Hudson Soft for the NES in 1991. The first game was an adaptation of Sega's Wonder Boy arcade game. Adventure Island 2 is an original work. An original work. As were all the subsequent Adventure Island games. It looks pretty awesome. I've never really played Wonder Boy. Look at all the islands. Alice Casey says these games were super fun, but so hard. That was kind of the story of the, a lot of the games on the NES, I guess. I don't, and I just, it always seems so uh, complicated. I think the hell is happening here. Because he says I didn't have any dinosaur friends to pick yet. Now I can pick this guy. I win. I'm gonna go fight that big pulsating pineapple. That's what I'm gonna do. Not have destroyed that egg. Oh no, my dino buddy. Frog. Oh. Uh, he's 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 dead. I want my dino buddy. Sad. Getting too cocky. Here's the plot. Master Higgins' girlfriend, Tina, has just been kidnapped by the evil witch doctor's persistent followers. Wow. 
Eight perilous islands are in control of the various monster minions. Although four friendly dinosaurs will gladly ally themselves with those willing to brave the island's dangers and defeat their common oppressors. Evil witch doctor. Oh, dude, he stole Master Higgins' girlfriend, Tina. Time limit, too? Alex Casey says this game is hard because the hitboxes are very picky. Yeah. It's true. This feels like every mistake is instant death. And, like, yeah, that's really brutal. I just have a time limit that's also my health. If I trip on a rock, I lose more of that health. He says the meter at the top drains until you eat fruit. That's so brutal. Oh, I, we're playing as Master Higgins. I didn't realize that. I, I assumed we were going to be like Master Higgins' nephew or something. But no. Gotta get a girlfriend back. This clue just looks like a Master Higgins. It's almost infinite runner style level design. Yeah, it's true. Just throwing stuff. Oh, that's cool. I got to save it because I got a new guy. Venture Island 2 is a video is one of the video games featured in the manga titled Cyber Boy. Oh, 
love Adventure Island too. I'll go read some cyber books. Cyber Boy. Learn all about it. He says, I played this game so many times. He says, the cave levels often starved you out with low food availability. Oh man, that's brutal. Seems like there's a ton of levels too. Did you ever beat it, Alex Casey? Oh, I go so much faster when I'm shooting. Oh my god. Yeah, that's... Oh, I missed a secret. Huh. Oh, and then you could you just... No, I, I stop starting at the beginning. But if I continue, I'm guessing, just means you could... Uh, like, if I beat the whole island, could you start from the next island? Alex says, yeah, I beat it once or twice. If you pass a flower on these fields, it will mean an enemy will run up at you from behind. Oh. What's wrong with this guy's face? like a puppet. I love how he like kicks out with the dinosaur. <laughs> I think they're cheek for cheekbones, but it looks like a weird chin or jaw problem. <laughs> totally. <coughs> it looks like one of those like guys that can like eat their own face. It's like, oh, wow, I can like put things away. That's cool. Ah. All right, uh, that's it for gaming history for a week. Um, I'm going to take a break, but I'm going to come back and play some more Togi for a while, because uh, all, we're, all I'm going to do really is grind, and I just really want that to get easier for when we <laughs> play it next week. So yeah, I will be right back.